Within this wooden piece lives a society like no others. Ants of all shapes and sizes work together to build an empire. Wars against mites and caring for the young is daily business for the carpenter ant colony. They grew from nothing to now dominating their surroundings. You may have spotted that these ants live in a wooden nest and potentially can escape, but that's not the full story. More on that later. Our carpenter ants needed more space. Their old nests were cramped and quite frankly looked messy. Luckily I got a huge package and inside it a massive nest. And together with the nest we also got a massive foraging area all from Toronto. Link in the description. Once decorated we could add the ants. This is their new setup. A desert where the ant can be seen searching for food while fighting the burning hot sun. From here, a long tube goes vertically up to their new home, the wooden nest. Chambers upon chambers are filled with the ant colony. And if it couldn't get any better, a rare sight of the queen. This Queen Anne is the mastermind behind the colony. Every worker has come from her ex. And she's not done. Eggs and small larvae can be seen scattered around the nest. While workers are watching over, making sure no foreigners come inside. But there is a dark side of being productive like our Queen. All these larvae need food to grow. And if they're not satisfied, they will start eating their fellow sisters. Therefore, the carpenter ants are on the lookout for more food to eat. But it was their luck today, as I had found a small frozen mouse. Warning, this may get disgusting. As I added the mouse, the ants quickly started attacking it. Ants from all over were coming down to help. The mouse was being swarmed now. Although the mouse was soft, it wasn't easy to grab on the skin. Guards stood and kept an eye out for danger. And as the ants arrived, so did the major workers. With heads made of muscles, they were made for this task. They grabbed on the meat and started slicing it up. Not long after, small chunks of meat could be ripped away and carried home. The skin of the mouse was quickly disappearing and the hungry colony could finally be satisfied. The sun was setting and the moon was starting to shine over the desert, but the ants didn't mind. They were still hard at work, fighting against time. All night long, workers were hard at work, fighting to remove all meat and carry it home. As the sun rised again, the night workers could see their progress. The ants had reached the bones, but this didn't stop them. As long as there was meat to eat, there would be ants present at the scene. 48 hours after the mouse was found, bones were all that remained. The ants were almost gone now. A clear sign that the mouse had done its job. The colony now had something to feed the larvae. The small mouse had been ripped from skin to now nothing. Inside the nest, the workers were hard at work, but something was spreading. More and more ants were turning blue. Even the small pieces of mouse were blue. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. If there's one thing these carpenter ants love more than anything else, it's sugar. Drops of sugar disappear in minutes. No matter the size, the ants will fight and win. But they may be too eager to eat the sugar. Workers walk on top of each other, trapping their sisters underneath the sugar, destined to die. The workers fall over each other as the sugar disappear underneath. Luckily, no ants drowned as the sugar was gone too fast. The blue ants showed how the ants stole their food, meaning the blue ants are a great sight to see. Through small kisses, the ants transfer the food among the members. The kisses are known as truffle and can be seen throughout the nest as sugar is being shared. 
Once more, the major ants play a different role. As they are bigger, they can store more food and often get fed up with whatever the ant colony find. That way, if the colony faces a drought, these majors can be drained once again. Sadly, one morning I saw something terrible. Death, death and death. The colony was dying. Although we never wanted to see this, it may just be workers dying of old age. Looking at the bodies, they don't look infected. But trust me, this colony have been fighting with blood-sucking mites for ages. And even today, the mites are still living among the colony, fighting to stay alive and take down every ant. But the carpenter ant colony are strong and they are prepared for a fight. Now why do I keep these carpenter ants in a wooden nest? What could possibly go wrong? Well, not much. Although these ants are called carpenter ants, they will not eat the nest. No, in the wild they may live in rotting wood, where they build the nest by biting and pulling it. But this is a dry, hard wood piece. And they simply won't be able to bite and escape the nest. At least, that's what I hope. Once again, this entire setup is made by the company for run, so there'll be a discount code and a link in the description. And if you want to follow the colony grow even bigger, I suggest you subscribe.